big blowout, we are going to see everything you would ever want to know about these two equations. These are both quadratic equations. We can tell because there's an x squared and there's also an x and a constant. And we want to find the vertex and axis of symmetry by putting the equation in vertex form. Uh, our book calls it standard form. Identify whether it has a maximum or minimum and find that value. That is the vertex, remember. That vertex point is the maximum point or minimum point, depending on which way the equation is facing. And then we would like to find that along with the x that produces it and find any intercepts and then sketch a graph. So let's get started on that vertex or standard form, first of all, for this first equation. So remember that we can find this by completing the square. So let's go ahead and bust this up. Um, first, we notice that we have something in front of the x squared. So we are going to need to factor that out of that term and the next term over. And I'm going to leave a space here, making enough room for our future filling in here. All right, so when we factor 3 out of 3x squared, we are left with x squared. When I factor 3 out of 18x, I am left with 6x. So again, if you're confused about that, what you're asking yourself is, what do I multiply times 3 to make this happen? So here I multiply x squared times 3 to make this happen. Here I multiplied 6x times 3 to make this happen. Now, we've got a blank to fill in in a minute. All right, our cheat down here, we're going to have 3. We're going to have x plus or minus something squared and then we'll have a number filled in on the end here, okay? I'm going to switch colors because I want to make sure that I am clear about what is new as I work. All right, so remember our cheat was, we know that this number here is double whatever started down here. So this is going to be positive three. So take this number in half, that gets us our number down there. Positive six becomes positive three. Then remember that we take that number and we square it to finish the work over here. So that would be positive nine, all right? Now we added nine, that's new. That wasn't in the original equation. It's yellow, it's new. So what did we add here? We added nine, but we added nine times three. So we need to balance this out by taking away 9 times 3, or I can write it in this order as well, 3 times 9. Okay, so that's going to be, and I'll just write it up here, that's a 27. All right, so what do I have to do down here then to finish up? This positive 18 and this negative 27 are going to get added together to make, what is that, negative 9 down here. Okay, so these two, we report that on the end here. Okay, so now what we know is we have a vertex at negative 3, negative 9, okay? We have our vertex information right now. And why negative 3? Because remember that when we add 3 to the x value, it shifts the graph that way, 3 units, which means that our vertex went from 0, 0, back 3, down 9. So we're at negative 3, negative 9 right now. That also means our axis of symmetry is known because that happens at the x value of the vertex. So our axis of symmetry will be x equals negative 3. Okay? Right here, we could graph it if we cared to, all right? But we know more information and we're going to finish finding it, okay? So let's find our intercepts next. So to find the intercepts, remember that um, I'm going to do the easy one first. The y-intercept happens when x equals 0. I'm going to use the original equation for this because it's easier and I'm lazy. So um, y equals, oops, equals 3 times 0 squared plus 18 times 0 plus 18. And remember that the shortcut for that is you know that the x's get wiped out. It's just that last number hanging off the end that is your y-intercept. So we have a y-intercept at 18, which won't be easy to graph. That's going to be pretty crazy. Um, but you notice here um, we have a growth rate of three times what we normally would. So that's a really tall, skinny graph. It grows fast. We go from a vertex of negative 9 at negative 3 to 0, 18. Okay? 
So let's report that as a point x is 0, y is 18. All right, next, x-intercepts happen when y is 0. So when y is 0 or f of x is 0, we're looking like this. 0 equals 3x squared plus 18x plus 18. Um, here's a fun thing we can do. We can divide these all by 3. We can divide by 3, divide by 3. Simplify our work a little bit. Because this will still be 0. And then we'd have x squared plus 6x plus 6. Um, let's think about factoring here. Boy, I don't see anything good. Well, worst case scenario, we could do um, either quadratic formula or we could use what we have over here to help us. Why don't we do that? Because we know that this also works this way. So 3, let me put it all in here and then I'll show you that the 3 can be divided out this one too. Okay, um, and then we'll add 9 to both sides. All right, then we can divide by three, or divide by three. So that'll be three here equals x plus three quantity squared. And here I can see that I wasn't gonna be able to factor that other one because it's gonna be messy. All right, so we will square root here, square root here, get a plus and a negative answer. So one of our answers is, I'm gonna just gonna stretch it out a little bit here. Positive square root of three equals x plus 3, negative square root of 3 equals x plus 3. So x is going to be equal to, oops, come on. Why won't it write? I guess I can put it up here. x equals negative 3, I'm just subtracting 3 from both sides, and I'm going to rewrite it in this order. Negative 3 plus the square root of 3, and here x equals negative 3 minus the square root of 3, okay? And if you ran it through the quadratic formula, you would get these exact same two intercepts. Um, I'm going to punch that up on a calculator quick and see what those are equal to as decimals. All right, so... Square root of 3... Oops, sorry. Negative 3 minus square root of 3 equals, that's about, this one over here I just did, is about negative 4.73. And then the other one is negative 1.2. Seven. So this one is about negative 1.27. Okay, so they're both negative when they cross. Okay, so what do we know about our little function here? So we can draw it. I wish I drew better on here, straight lines. Okay, we know that we have, um, gosh, we're going back three, down nine. So one, two, one. Try to make these small, tiny. One, two, three, that'll be okay. And then one, two, three, four. Oh, oh man. <laughs> We're really just going to estimate here because these should be all accurately, nicely spaced. I should have brought in an actual graph to graph it on. But all right, so negative three, negative nine is our vertex. We know that we have an intercept up here at like 18, so it's going to be way, it's going to be double as high as this one is low. Okay, and then we've got that negative uh, 1.27, so right in here somewhere we're going to hit. Okay, sketching, sketching, sketching. This is so sad. Okay, <laughs> and then negative 4, so this is 3, 4, 5, negative 4.7. We're going to be crossing in between 4 and 5, back that way. Okay, so there's a sketch of the graph. All right, there's a professional one on MO2. Take. Go ahead and check it out.
All right, so that's everything we need to know, right? We got vertex, we got axis of symmetry, we got the intercepts, we are good to go. Okay, so that one didn't have really nice intercepts, but that's okay. It just at least gives you an estimate when you're sketching about where you want to go with that. Okay, so next let's go to, I'm going to pick a different color here because I want to make sure that I'm not running into, if I do run into the other, then you're not confused about what that looks like. Okay, so here's our second example. Okay, and we will do the completing the square again, just to show you that. So, um, and then I will actually go back, if I remember, and run through how the negative b over 2a part works, if you wanted to do it that, direct, that way instead. Okay, all right, so I'm rewriting this. I am factoring out negative 2. And when I do that, oops, I'm going to get a negative x squared here. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Never mind. Sorry. I'm going to get a positive x squared here. <laughs> that didn't happen. Okay. So positive x squared. Negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Okay. But I am going to get, I'm going to actually erase it so it's neater. I'm going to get a positive, instead of a positive 10x, I need it to be positive 20x when I'm done. So... That will need to be a negative 10x right now. All right, got it? So negative 2 times x squared is the negative 2x squared from here. Negative 2 times negative 10x will give me the positive 20x that's here. The negative 52 is just hanging out over here. All right, let's put down our cheat line. We're going to have x. Now I can see that's going to be negative, so I'm going to say minus right away something squared and then we'll have something on the end now i'll go get another color so we can fill it in uh what should we do bright blue sure okay and now our think time remember that this right here is twice what this is so this is half of that all right and then we square it to add it back on okay and now what did i do here i had 25 times negative 2 added to the equation, so I need to take away 25 times negative 2 to fix it, right, to balance it back out, All right? because I don't want anything new, I don't want to change what I started with, I want to fix that again. So what do I have here? So this is negative 52 plus 50, so I'm actually going to end up with, what do I need to put on the end here? Negative 2. All right. Now I can see my vertex. Again, remember, uh, subtracting 5 from x moves us this way 5 units. My vertex is going to be positive 5 and down to negative 2. All right. And then that means our axis of symmetry is at x equals 5. All right. Uh, other things we know, we know the y-intercept is where x equals 0. So when x equals 0, everything goes away except negative 52. So we have an x-intercept of negative 52, which we are not even going to attempt to graph because that is ridiculous. The x-intercepts happen when y equals 0. So I don't know, let's see what we've got here. This could be a thing. So when y is 0, we have 0 equals, what is it, negative 2x squared plus 20x minus 52. Now, we could, again, like we did before, divide everything by negative 2. I'm just going to take a look and see if this is something that I might be able to factor because that's the lazier method. But if I can't factor it, I will use my information from up here to fix it and uh, figure it out. So I've got positive x squared minus 10x um, minus, no, plus 26. All right, what's 26? 26 is 13 and 2. Oh, stink. We're not going to get it. All right, so never mind. All right, so we'll just use the other, the other format, which we found over here. Okay. Negative 2 times x minus 5 quantity squared minus 2. And again, or you could put this through the quadratic formula perfectly fine. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. 
So positive 2 equals negative 2 times all of this. Just unraveling that x. Divide by negative 2. So negative 1 equals x minus... Oh, shoot! Did I forget to do a thing? Ha 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 ha, silly me. Look what's happening here. We're going to get a square root of a negative number. I should have checked ahead of time. I forgot my laziness. What happened to me? All right, looking down here. Check this out. Okay, the vertex is 5, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm really bad at tick marks today. And negative 2, 1, 2. We're down here, and it's a frowner. So look, it's not even gonna, it's not gonna come back and touch the x-axis, all right? It's gonna go like that. All right, so we do not have any intercepts for the x, and we do have the y-intercepts, but like I said, they're way down at negative 52, so we're done with that one. Okay, now, um, what did I promise you? I promised you we would, we would look into what happens with the minus b over 2a version of the vertex, right? So let's look at that for this one over here first. Vertex. Minus b over 2a is the x value of the vertex. So what's um, negative b here? Um, b was 20, so it would be in this case negative 20 divided by 2 times, what's a? a is out in front of x squared. That's negative 2 right here. 2 times negative 2, okay, which is negative 20 divided by negative 4, which is positive 5. Yay, that's what we found up here. Same thing, right? That's this. Okay, so x is 5, and then how do we find the y? If we don't know it another way, we put it in. We go ahead and, oops, negative 2, sorry, times 5 squared. We put our 5 into the formula and find the y value that matches with it. Minus 52, okay. So 5 squared is 25, 25 times negative 2 is negative 50, plus 20 times 5 is 100, minus, oops, there we go, 52, okay, so what is that all together? So that's 100 minus 50 is 50. 50 minus 52 is negative 2. <gasps> that's exactly what we found up above, isn't it? Okay, so that's the other way to get to the vertex, okay? Let me show you that on the other side here, too. Uh, let's pick, what do we have, yellow, I think we did? We'll use yellow. Okay, so finding the vertex the other way over here. So the other way to find the vertex is x equals negative b over 2a. Okay, that was a little messy. Let's fix that up. Okay, so, and that's a. All right, so what is b on this one? b is positive 18. So negative b is negative 18 divided by 2 times a. What's a? Let's find it. It's 3. Okay, that's negative 18 over 6, which is negative 3. Hey, that's what we found before. All right, and how do we find that y value that goes with it? Well, we use our formula. So it's 3x squared. x is now negative 3 plus 18x. x is negative 3 plus 18. Okay. Now, remember that negative 3 is being squared, so it's negative 3 times negative 3 for a positive 9. Positive 9 times 3 is 27. Okay, and 18 times negative 3 is negative 54, and then we have plus 18. Okay, so what's all that? Um, this is negative 27 plus 18 is negative 9. Oh, hey, that's what we got the last time. Okay, so there's your x value, there's your y value for your vertex. If you don't like completing the square, you can get it this way, and then you can work on everything from there. Now, if you didn't have, um, so if you didn't do completing the square, you won't have this, okay, to work on. So you will have to take this and go to the quadratic formula. Let me show you that really quick. So um, this one here. So that goes to the quadratic formula. Now, your a is 1, your b 
is 6, your C is also 6, okay? So you're looking at minus B. I'll write it all out first and then we'll go. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay, so minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 6. It's getting messy. That's a 6. And then all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. Okay, back over here. So that's negative 6 plus or minus. I'm going to run out of room at the bottom here. Um, 36 minus 24. So that's what, 12, right? Over 2. Okay. Um, divided by 2. There, showed up. Okay. Um, now, if you know you can simplify 12 to be 2 times the square root of 3, and you can also divide negative 6 by 2, you will get these two numbers out of quadratic formula as well as the other direction. So, okay. So I'll, you're going to have to take my word for it. You have to work on that. Okay, so 12 is 4 times 3, so that's 2 times the square root of 3. And then divide that by 2, you'll get the regular square root of 3. Divide negative 3 by the 2, you'll also get a negative 3 over there. So that's how that works. All right, have fun, kids.